We're up to see if Dalit pay tests. right now. So the Machabim, we should also give in if you eat cheese, roitzelech abuser, you want to eat meat. So he's now we're going to talk, not what we spoke before, he's going to talk about surich, lavar, mal shilchan, got to take off from the table. Shire pass the leftover of the bread. <laughs> leftover of the bread. Shochle in agvina. That means the bread that was on the table when you ate cheese, you cannot eat the bread at a fleshiger meal. Or vice versa. If you ate the bread that was eaten in a challah that you ate Shabbos table. So always we have leftover challah. So you cannot eat that challah with milchiks. Unless you conscientiously cut the challah, you know, put it away, you know, on the side, then you made sure. But otherwise, we assume that the challah became fleshy. So you can make, what is it called, French toast you make with the bread, and you put some, so you want to put some cheese, you cannot do that. Because we assume if you ate in a fleshy table, that it became fleshy. You touched it with the meat, fat in your hands. and So that's uh, a very important halacha. He says, um, then he says another thing. You can, must have another tablecloth. You can't have the same tablecloth. This is an old, old minig. There's nothing to do with Svartim Ashkenazim. This is based on the Gemara. And the minig became that you have to have two, two separate tablecloths. You don't, or you don't eat on the same table. You, you can have on the table eat mochiks and fleshes, you cover the table. People have asked me to have a nice, fancy kitchen table, and uh, why not use it? Why well, have it covered, right? No chicks you can eat. You can decide one way, but you, can, you must make sure. See, the times of the Gemara, the Shulchan Aruch, the table they did not want to use to eat no chicks and, uh, um, because it had holes in it, you know. We think, you know, it's like a caterer's uh, table. It's not very nice, right? Uh, has a lot of uh, holes and ditches in it. So, you know, but the, our tables has a whole different world. So the, the point is that you have to have a separate tablecloth. That's a very important. And we spoke about it, you have a separate salt shaker. And, and, you know, because I even make sure that we have a separate, uh, as it called, ketchup. And uh, the, the, the red stuff, uh, the white, the yellow is the, the mustard, you know. It's, you have children, make it in mustard. You make it in, it's not so terrible, but when you have children, it's, it's, it's impossible to, to, to... When, when we say in the sip that, that uh, bread, does that apply to anything that's on the table? Anything that's on the table, unless you made sure you were conscious about it. So anything on the table, we assume became fleshy. Now, you don't become fleshy when you eat it. Remember, we spoke about that last week. Now, he's asking, when Yaman is asking, let's say you had on the table vegetables. Okay, or well, the pickles, and you took it. Maybe you took it out with fleshy hand. So now I'm going to eat a pickle. I don't become fleshy, but I cannot eat the pickle with milk together. So if I eat, I eat the vegetables that was on the fleshy table, that I don't become fleshy with it, 
You just don't put sour cream onto the vegetables. Unless you see meat on the pickle. Yeah, well, even if you see, you don't become flashy if you're not intentioned to eat. You know. Yeah. Uh, is the table the same as the counter? Like if you're preparing food? You should have a um, should have separate to uh, make sure. Because you prepare food, you left over this, and we have, uh, most pe people have. You use a certain <laughs> ingredient, you use a certain ingredient with flesh, like spices, no, spices, not with, not with tacos. Let's say you're preparing food that's cold, and then you're about to put it in. It's cold vegetables that you're about to put in. Yeah, that's not talking about that. We're talking about, you, you have to put meat on the counter. You take out you the chicken, you put it on the counter, and then the next day you take out the cheese and uh, what's it put on the counter. You should have separate counters, and mochis and flesh eggs. When you see it on the table, like uh, I've been in my house, a big fruit bowl sitting on the kitchen table with, with unpeeled fruits. Sing, are you saying that those would become flavors? Don't want, don't want, you know, do they eat in the middle of the meal? The no, 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 it's sitting there in the snack. Yeah. I'm saying, but in theory, let's say I didn't think like that, if an unpeeled fruit and orange sitting there. That's not a pop unpeeled food, but we're talking about, let's say, you have grapes, and you people do not smell the table while of eating. So that becomes that you shouldn't uh, bring it a flesh if you have a flesh you don't bring in a milk and give me. Now you said a uh, separate or a new tablecloth. If you wash it, does that become new or? A pialuch, if you wash it, it's it's okay. But you, you have to have a simon. It's not just you have separate tablecloths. You know, you're right. But he's asking, you, you know, you don't need to cash a tablecloth. Washing a table with hot water is uh, it's good enough. But 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 the truth about what he's asking is. We have, you have to have a simon, which one is milchiks, which one is fleshiks. Uh, and I'm going to say even more. You have to have a simon on the, on the silverware. I tell this to everyone. People call me, the silverware got mixed up. You notice the silverware got mixed up because the difference in milchiks and fleshiks is only the design. And children mix them up all the time, all the shiksa. But if you have, let's say, I made sure that the milchik silverware is totally different. It's a, a, mine has a wooden handle. The wooden comes the nice wooden thing. It never makes since then. This is like 20 years I did it. I was so frustrated. One day I just went out and got myself a new set of, and it never happened afterwards because you know, children are children, you know, they don't pay, you know, don't pay attention. So, you know, the, this is wood, you know, what I mean, so just a wood handle, it holds a whole different design. Otherwise, you notice that it gets mixed up all the time, especially with the shiksa, you know. That's good enough. Exactly. Well, place mats. Place mats. Right. But, but you're right. You have, but you have to have a simon. Very, very important. I don't know, you know, I mean, one of the audience noticed, but if you have small children, not small children, teenagers. You know, teenagers are sometimes very uh, uh, into themselves sometimes, and they don't pay attention. You know. And they don't, you know, and, and it's true. When I, I ask people when it happens, you know, I'm just, just curious. How did silver co milk and silver wind itself in the flesh of a dishwasher? Well, the shikhs, I always ask them, is the design different? Yeah, it's a different design. That doesn't help. I've watched from all the years. Practically speaking, just because it's a different design, it doesn't help. I saw my own house. It just didn't help. You have a total different, then, you, then, it's, uh, then it works. Okay. The cold skinny says... See, we, I want to tell you something, boy. So we are Baruch Hashem blessed with wealth. They couldn't afford another knife. You know, a lady told me, asked me that she inherited from my grandmother the knives, and she says my grandmother got it from Hank, her grandmother. So she, she wanted a kasher, and she bought me knives. It's incredible, these hundred years old knives. It's a, but, you know, this is how it used to be. We, you know, you lose a knife, I get chef dust. Our knives are not, a, it's not expensive. Do you have Yeah, it happens to be some, you're able, some not, because of the handle, the way the handle was made. But I'm just saying, we could afford ourselves, you know, I make sure that the handle knives, the sharp knives, and the, the fleshing is red, and the, the milking is blue, and then we have uh, the black ones as parv. So with the children know, it's where they're coming and going. I have, I have a bunch of girls, but it doesn't make a difference. Boys are just as bad as girls, you know what I mean? You, you brought up the point, if, it's, if I take a milk and silverware and I put it in the flesh dishwasher and wash, does it make the dishwasher... 
doesn't make it shave, it doesn't. But it's, it's a big diavid. It's a huge diavid. So in theory, it really should be that the dishwasher is trade. Right, we'll, we'll explain later. We'll get to it why it's not. We'll have a whole sermon about why it's not. But it's a big diavid, and you should. Uh, well, you should yes, you should pour you should pour boiling water over it, but th- and it does happen. You have there some people that use the same dishwasher. For no, everyone agrees you shouldn't do that. Okay, you shouldn't do that. Not at the same time, but, but uh, you, you know, there are people I heard about I heard thirty. Is it? Yeah, I, I can't can't speak for other Rabbanim. I barely could talk for myself. <laughs> and uh, the truth is that a dishwasher, if you look at the dishwasher, you notice that uh, you know unless you have the very expensive ones. If someone showed me a uh, uh, very very expensive ones, you, there's always like residue. You look into it, and after cleaning, you see there's residue. You see, you notice, you notice there is always residue. So, so you just wear flashix. How could you say you make milkix the next day? There's residue. You see, touch it, you notice. But but not always does it do a good job. I well, I did it many many years. I tried it out. So uh, someone just now showed me that he has a very expensive. When he showed me that it comes out clean, the dishwasher. It's very you know. But n- it's better. But it's you have one back, right? Well, no, uh, that's what the guy has a stainless steel, and I, he just showed me that he puts a better. But you have to make sure. But still, the many is and the uh, lady learn why. It will see why you can't have a dishwasher for milk inflation. It's a whole sermon later. We'll get to it. Okay. Don't cut cheese, cold cheese. You know, the, the meat, the same night that you cut meat, don't cut cheese, he says. Even if you cleaned it up. Let's see you're cutting bread. Right? So you use the knife. If you cut bread <coughs> to cut uh, cheese, don't. Because then you can cut the bread, and the bread is going to become milk. You're not going to realize it. So do not. We, uh, that's why it used to be a minig. We don't, we, most of us don't cut bread. We have a challah knife, right? Usually you don't use a challah knife only for challah. That is the minig. Because you want to, we want to have a separate challah knife because we don't want to use the knife that you use milk for cut the challah because the challah becomes milk Maybe you didn't clean it real well. So you understand? So that's why. You have a challah knife. Bread, we get it pre-cut. Unless you make your own home, homemade bread. The health people do make a homemade bread. But they, they get yourself a bread cutter. You know, you have to have a separate cut, uh, uh, thing to cut the bread. Okay? That's what he says. So the Ramu says, You know, the Ramu is very interesting. He, he, he says everything in detail. So not only don't cut the bread with the flesh you get, don't cut the bread with a milchige knife. You know, he wants to make sure you get the message. Do not, it's not a milchige knife for the bread, not a flesh knife for the bread, he says. Now I want to explain this. Many, many people know from the grandmothers, the You know, when you take the knife and put it into the ground. People have told me the most funny stories about putting things into the ground. One guy told me he used to see his grandmother put the knife into the ground, leave it there for two weeks, and then hocus pocus, everything is okay. There's no such a locha. There's no keeping the ground two weeks. And the thing is that if you cut a knife, milchix, if you want to use it for fleshy cold, you stick in the ground ten times, and then we say that all the fat of it came off. That's what we say. Okay. That's it. That's it. You can't cash it by sticking the ground. If a knife becomes strafe, you cash it by boiling water. Clean it off well. But here we're talking about it's a milchig knife. When it's a fleshig, a fleshig, you want a milchig. So, no, the fleshig, you're not using boiling water at all, only the ground? That means if you cleaned it up, but it's, we're afraid there's fat in it. They didn't have our boiling water with our, you know, things that melt the grease. So, they would they stick in the ground 10 times, and that's going to make sure that any grease that's on the knife came off. That's what it was. That's a cleaning process. That's a cleaning process. Right, does not help putting it to the ground. You have to literally kosher it. Even a, even a meat knife, you want to make into milk. You, you have to kosher it. 
kasher. You have to kasher. What? what? It doesn't make a difference. So if anyone, I just want to say another thing. We don't, I don't know about the Svadim, we Ashkenazim, they're not changed from Mulchiks of Reish, of Reish, of Mulchiks. Only if you do it for Pesach, or there's a big Tzorich, we don't do that. So it's, a, it's a famous minig that Shulchan Chara brings it down to, and Hilchah's Yom Tov. Oven, right? Uh, okay, oven and... Yeah. Right. Yes. But uh, the Kalim is a special Akpeid, not to switch. So if you have, you know, people have asked me now. If someone asked me, I gave it a shir and my side of town, and I mentioned that to, for the ladies. I mentioned she has separate dishes. F- two of the ladies went out and bought some mulchiks a different in silverware because they said they always have the problem. The children mix them up. The design is not good enough. You have to have a clear. So they want to know, I want to turn all that into fleshik. I says, right. then you're allowed to do it. Instead of throwing it out, you're allowed to do it. So he says, just cash it and use it for fleshik. But just for the comfortable, whatever, with the minig is not to. That's an important minig. Does but, the again take into effect that all this covering? <coughs> yeah, sure. So if I clean it and then leave it over for more than a day. Yeah, but that's better yavid. Any binyoyim is only be, always better yavid. Because I will go to any binyoyim or to binyoyim. I said, that's only a day yavid. Okay. So he says, "Mial din itz bekar ke kushishura, avakon hagi kol yisulis them shnei sakinam, two knives, v'lirshem echod mehem." They put a simon on one of the knives. Sheila heker v'nagi shechulav v'nishanas minik she yisul. The minik was to make a sign on the milchiger thing. That's why I get the milchiger differently, like wood, you know, like not the normal thing. You know, that's what I do. But the minik was to make sure the milchiger. Same with the pots. You should have a simon. Don't, you know how I have a lady once called me, she had, she bought this fancy, you know, pots, and the milk and flakes were the same. She says, I never made a mistake, but her 14 year old daughter went and cooked uh, meat, and the milk. I said, How do you know it's milk? It looked the same, because it has a small dent in the bottom. <laughs> I said, to her, What are you doing? I mean, well, even you're going to make a mistake. You're not allowed to do that. You have to have the parts has to be different too. You have to. It's uh, it's a, a, a you'll notice if you have it's different. You really the mistakes come up. Okay. All right. Now I really was going to learn tzaddik hey. I didn't know the rabbi was not well over here. Didn't copy tzaddik hey. But uh, we started last week talking about tzaddik hey. So let me let me say the gemara about per. Let me explain the whole sugya. And uh, it's not such a, it's just uh, not such a complicated sugya. We didn't make copies. We're not up to. So, uh, let me explain. The Gemara says like this. A guy, a dog him, a guy took fish, and he, and, and she'oli bekara. That's the Loshan Gemara. He took hot fish and put it into a plate. So the with the fish, the plate that was a flesh a plate. So it says dogim sheoli bekara fish that you put into a hot fish out of the oven. <coughs> and you put it into a milk a plate. The it says you a flesh a plate. I'm sorry, flesh a plate. So when it says you could eat the fish now with kutach, kutach in the times of the Gemara was a I don't know how they did it. But it was made out of sour cream, a fish sauce, and it lasted for weeks. I don't know how. Don't ask me how. But you know, uh, yeah, I don't know. And that was a delicacy. And it seems something more. It was for shimmel. That was a delicacy. It's a. It was a. It was a sour cream, something with the fish sauce. Anyways, the kitsa. So the gemara says. Now the question is, what is the question? The question is, the, the fish that you put into the plate, plate was a flesh sugar plate. So the fish got a taste of meat. So after we can, you're allowed to put sour cream on it. It's called a nat bar nat. It's called a noisen tam bar noisen tam. You know what I mean? It's twice a noisen tam. That means the plate got an absorption of a taste from the plate went into the fish, and it's still hetter. So now, since it's still hetter, now you can put sour cream onto it. 
Now, now that is this question. That is the next question. Like what's the condition you put the hot fish on a fleshy plate? Fleshy plate. plate. And now I want to take use the fish and put sour cream out of it. Not on the plate. Take it off the plate. Take a plate, put it into a paper Where plate. It and I want it. It was cooked in a uh, now, that's the question. It was cooked in a part of a pot. Okay. I took the fish and put it onto a plate. Clean yeah. fleshy plate. plate. And now I took it from the plate. I want to put sour cream onto the fish. So now this fish are a taste of meat. First thing you see that you're allowed to have, I mean, the first thing you see that the Gemara does not worry about the blia. Blia means some absorption of the fish into the meat, from the meat into the fish. We have a rule, you can't eat meat and fish together. I took fish and put it on a plate, and we say the taste of meat went into the fish. Wait a minute. You know, you know I always tell people, if you tell people it's dangerous, then they really listen. It's halacha. No. I once had a Svadi call me up. Nothing against a Svadi. But I was just telling you, the Svadi called me up. He tells me he's going to Etzisol for, for the summer. He was offered $6,000 or $9,000 a month to use his house. But they're going to wreck the house. What do they do? They, they, the whole weekend, they come and gamble. And you could imagine what gambling would. They also bring other hilarious into the house besides gambling. And, uh, but he's willing to pay $9,000. And they only want it for three months because after three months, the police come and chase them away. So they find another place. So he was going to make $21,000 for three months. Not bad for doing that. And he's gonna, he has to move out the furniture into the garage. He tells him it's going to be a wreck. He might have to pay. It's not bad. Uh, so, so, a 20, a 20, so what's the question? Uh, he asked me, it's a method, it's usur. I says, you're helping them gamble and bring shiksas into the home. Oh, no. He says, you know. You have to ask these questions? What? You have to ask these questions? I just listen, listen. listen. He asked the question. I didn't ask him. He asked him. He called me up. No, no, no. Uh, does he have to ask those questions? What's that? They told him. They told him what they're using it for. They told him, this way you're going to come gamble. And I understood between his words, a plus, not just gambling. But he said... But, but he told me, you should take everything out of the house because we're going to rag it out. So it's, it's $28,000, three months. Not, it's nothing to sneeze about, he tells me. I tell him, you know, that you're even a side of the Aveda, you're helping the Aveda. He it, it doesn't get it. He says, I want to ask you, Rabbi, I want to ask you one thing. After they move out, is there going to be a, a Ruach Tum in the house? That's all he wants to know. I say, yes. Yes? Then no way I'm letting him go. Yeah. That was also if never I said the mechshel. Nah, he didn't know a ruach tumah in the house. Uh, uh, I really respect that, you know. And I, uh, my house, no ruach tumah. You know, I mean, no way uh, to get rid of the ruach tumah. <laughs> <laughs> for another nine thousand dollars, maybe. <laughs> anyway, so uh, you know, I, I, what I'm trying to say is. People, you tell them, people are so worried about the Rebida Chassid things and Aloha, you know, they're not so mad, but, you know, it comes to some of these uh, things. So the Gemara does, that's the problem. The Gemara says you're allowed to have fish in a flesh, you get plate, and everyone asks what happened to the uh, uh, meat and fish. So the, the many learn, many had a many, especially the Polish, I can't talk about this one, but the Polish were not Macbeth. The Polish would cook fish in a flesh <coughs> pot. Period. Didn't have a fish pot. The, the tour brings down, the mini was not that way, the half of the fish is separate around the Hungarians, I know for a fact, and the Yekis, had a separate fish pot. To this day they do that. They do it. I grew up this way. My God. Not the cutlery, just the fish was at a special fish pot because if you cook, if it's a flesh you get pot, you can't, you're going to cook fish in it. You're going to, you know, it's a... It's, it's balay. I, I, I just know my mother, uh, that I live long still, and does, I grew up this way. My wife grew up this way. Almost all Hungarians. But I, um, people have told me through the years, the Polish... Uh, I will never have that paid. Your parents are Polish? <laughs> but they were not Makpit, you know? You know they were uh, so The Russians were Makpit. The Russians were Makpit, that's true. The Polish were not the Russians, yes. So to this day? To this day. If you want to cook fish. You had we had a fish pot. Separate uh, fish. We have a fly. Till today's day, we have a fish pot. Uh -huh. it, it is because. 
we're we worried about the, the fish is shouldn't, you know, you, cooking, but this case it's doesn't not, make a difference. In this right. case with the plate, it's not the right. So okay. that's the question. The, to, to the some hold that the, 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 the some loim shat and the rishonim based on the rishonim that it's a, it's not cooking. It's just put on the plate. It's okay. So you can use a flesh. You, you know, people have had. My wife always asks me this question. You know, um, she says, you know, she grew up. They, they didn't put the fish into the plate. We grew up. We put. We used the flesh. You plate to put the hot fish into it. We never had a problem. So they had a fish plate. No. No, she didn't. She, she, I don't know why she's always puzzled with this, but the uh, plate, you, we, we, do have, we don't have a separate fish plate. You put hot fish, even though you cooked it in a, you know, and, but uh, uh, fish, we don't have a separate fish plate. But uh, on pots, that was the main. I, I don't know, does Svartim have this many? I don't know. Right, right, right. Also, we have plate, big plate, I would put fish in meat plate. Yeah, but plate, everyone agrees. But the question, the pot, that was uh, the many, because uh, many got pots. Now, you have to cook fish, the fish in separate spots? You don't have to. Yes, you have to find you find out your minik. It's just a minik. It's hard to know. Your wife is by the You have to find out the minhugim. I don't know the. I don't know if they know this minik. This is not the standardized minik. Yes. So let's say you have a big bar of hot potato and you cook it in a meat pot, but the meat pot cleaned up before 24 hours. You cook meat 12 hours or whatever. But the oven. We're going to s- talk about this right now in a minute, just a second. So now, this is the Gemara. So Gemara says it's called Nat Banan. So there's two major questions. Why does the Gemara say you cook fish and you put it in a pot? It doesn't say which tava, but you put it in a flesh sugar plate. Why doesn't the Gemara say you cook fish in a flesh sugar pot? That's Rasha's question. Rasha held. Why does it say Dugan Sha'oli Bekara? Why does it say you cook fish in a flesh shaker pot? Rasha's opinion is that if you cook fish in a flesh shaker pot, you cannot put milk on it. That's Rasha's opinion. And all come out, all the Rishonim argue. Now let's start with the Svardim. The Machaba Paskins, that the Ketchela, you allow to cook, let's say, on a Ben Yoimoi, you're cooking fish in a flesh shaker pot. You could take the fish, put it into a plate, and put sour cream on it. Like a tchila, like a tchila. I don't know if you guys listen to this. What did you say? Yeah, yeah. So this, this is how the uh, last week spoke about it. This is how the Svadim ta- uh, uh, Maisa Machaba says so. The we Ashkenazim, we like a tchila machme, that if it's cooked, and that means you could let, I said the Moshe with the potatoes, which is always you, your wife cooks the potatoes in a flesh sugar pot. If it's a ben yoyma, you sh- do not put sour cream onto it. Period. If you be the ever yeah, you did put sour cream, it's okay. But if you know one of your children, uh, you know, is someone who doesn't, you know, wife knows that she wants to use the potatoes for, from it's cooked the flesh sugar pot, want to use it for milk, because you're not allowed to do that. Now, I explained last week, and there's a machlekes. If it's an ben yoyimoy, like he just said before, the machlekes in the guan and the shuk and the and the chach mesudim. I don't know. I grew up that it's okay, and I see all today's the kutim, you know, you know, new svarim, all amachme. But that's as generations go. Yes, we you know we get from them, we get from we tell them. We Ashkenazim like homeless as a rule. So you know, but uh, the original I grew up, there was no problem that you know. We, we had any ben yoyimoy was okay, not a problem. But anyway, so uh, if it's a ben yoyimoy, you know for sure. Again, if the potatoes are cooked in a pot that's a ben yoyimoy, you're not allowed to put sour cream on it. But if you ever you put sour cream, you don't have to throw away. You can eat it. Maybe it's, it was used the last twenty. It was still in the twenty-four hours of use of the meat. You cooked meat nine o'clock this morning. Now it's five o'clock in the afternoon. You no, cooked no, the potatoes. Uh, 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 that, uh, that's when if you don't know but if you do know very often people come in with chalas things got mixed up and they say I used this pot this morning uh, you know for sure you know, and they cook potatoes yeah cook potatoes yeah so that, that's uh, if you know for sure you know for sure so this is this is now so even if you know that it's a bit you don't put you know sour cream on it if you cook if it's Ben Yoyma, any Ben Yoyma, you said. Any Ben Yoyma is a Machoikas. Okay. The Chachmas Odom and the Vilna Gon. Sorry. Who says what? 
The Chachma Sudam is Machma, and the Bira Gru is Mekel. <laughs> I once showed the Lubavitcher, he could not believe it. Many, many years ago, I think it was the Rabbi from Santa Monica, what was his name, Rabbi? Yeah, yeah. I think it was him. I, um, I told him of a tshuva, and he didn't believe me, and I showed it to him. That Samach Tzedek writes in a place, uh, what? Because, and he writes in a place, I don't like what my grandfather says at all, and I like what the the Gom uh, Vilna, the way he learns Pshat Ben Abchava. What was the Indian? He said that here? The Samach Tzedek. The, Rabab, the grandson of the Babich Rebbe. Oh, yeah. And there's even one even more profound, which is uh, everyone married here? Okay. So there's a, there's a profound Semach Tzedek. Semach Tzedek says in Hilchas Nida, he says he asked the old ladies who knew his grandfather if by, if by Dam Besula Ekesem Asas or not. That means after the, 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 the psalm were ripped, and the next second time you're together, often you find kesem. So if it's, you have a colored sheet, does she become also for the husband then or not? So he says, the older ladies told me, I uh, checked it with a few of the ladies, and all said that the altar ever was Mahmoud. And he writes a tshuva firing that... Uh, can't be. Can't be. No, it doesn't say it can't be. I disagree, and he brings rise. And, uh, so I had no idea how, how the Babaj does. So I asked a few of the Baba Chirvanam, and Rabbi Farkash was here when he married of his son 30, 14 years ago. He says, I'm the Baba Mercedes to be making. Even though he's arguing with the Alter Rebbe. This is in the felt was accepted because not only it's him, it's other Khrenimosa, but he says clearly that Razay the Paskin this way. What do you say? Yeah, no, no, he, no. yeah, but he, no, he has a rye from a toysis. It's not, not a rye. He just brings a rye from a toysis and it's a dike from, a, from another issue in that way. And that's it. Uh, I mean, in Torah, the, a, a true Torah knows no sepunam. That's how it works. Torah doesn't make it a who, who, who is it. Okay. I know it's hard for Hasidim to swallow this. Right? Yeah, it's Amos, Amos, it's not, uh, if you, uh, you know. You know, I, I, when I first learned many years ago, Hilchus Tzitzis, I learned being, it's a very difficult Siddur Arav about, uh, how, about Tzitzis, uh, very difficult. And I remember I went to, uh, you know, I was learning in the Karimah, to Rabbi Shoich, if he knows Pshat, he didn't know Pshat, then he calls me back, he says that Samach Tzedek asks, he found that Samach Tzedek asked ask the Kasha, and he blibes by Kasha. I was so surprised, like, you know, a chassid will come up in all types of terutsim, just, you know, he, have, he has no, how you say, no sepunam? How you say in English, no sepunam? No, more than that. He, you know, he had, there's no, uh, he treated out the Rebbe would be any other achran. He just says the words don't make sense, period. End of sentence, and doesn't say an answer. I said, for sure he's going to say an answer, it's his grandfather, and this is a, you know, they come up with some, you know, sometimes the Akhrenim come up with the most, you know, funny answer just to make a, well, Titus, 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 Amos, we don't, uh, not, uh, there's no favoritism. Okay, so let me, let me go back to this over here. So this is a Mkhlaik Shudu Gunan. Now, this, the, 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 the question is another question. My is if Lechatchila, you can put sour cream on those potatoes. Right. The, the going says yes, right? No. But who would agree that if the sour cream is already on the potatoes? Everyone agrees it's okay. Sure. The question is, the question is even more, can I let it, no, the question is better, can I let it go cook? If I know what's going to happen, can I do it? That's the question. With, with the intention, before I cook. Right, that I, you know that your child or your wife or your <coughs> whoever is going to eat is going to eat that. That's the question. I can't, I don't I, you know, I, I, when I give a shit, I always say both opinions. I, I, my good girls, all my daughters learned in school the Chumra. That's why I realized that everyone teaches the Chumra already. Because uh, they, they you know, based on which Sefer, look in that Sefer, it doesn't even bring a Machlaikas, just that's how they teach it. <coughs> yeah, but it's a really a Machlaikas. What? It's hard me, it's far Machlala Meiko about the whole thing. <coughs> 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 
Now, l- l- uh, since we don't have the Shulchan Aruch, so let me just say another part of the Gemara says. Dover uh, Kharif, we spoke about it, and there's very much Negei here with Dover Kharif. So, there's a Chlik is how to learn Pshat in the Gemara. Many people don't realize that. The whole Dover Kharif Chiddush is a Chlikish in Rasha and the other Rishonim. I mean, the Gemara seems to say if I cut an onion, then I cannot use, then, uh, uh, for the flashing a knife, then I cannot, even with the evidence, it's going to be Usa with milk. Question is why? So, one Nishanim learned the knife was the dirty knife. But nothing to do with the shchar. Other Nishanim learned no. It's a dove charev. Charev means an onion is sharp. And a dove charev is so powerful that it takes the whole taste out of the knife into the onion, and the onion became fleshig. Not only does it do that, it changes a ene benyoyma into a benyoyma. So Dovah Kharev does two incredible things. One, it, it, it normally would say it doesn't take the whole taste. It's a tam kolish. It's a weak taste. Here, we say, no, it takes the whole taste out of the knife, the fleshing knife, and made an entire onion fleshing. And even if the knife is in a ben yoimoy, which is, shouldn't be a problem, he switched it into ben yoimoy. It's an incredible chiddush. And that's how we paskin. We paskin like a that if you cook, you <coughs> cut a knife with a fleshing, you cut an onion with a fleshing. And I, a mamish, a mamish uh, Friday, a lady uh, asked me this question. Um, she, uh, uh, no, it was Thursday, she asked me, she prepared onions with a fleshing and knife, uh, fled milk, it was the other way around, milking a knife, and she wants to put it for the Shabbos meat, fleshing. What she do? I said, just throw out the onions, you can't use it. We pass in, uh, even though it's in the Yoyme, the onions become fleshing. How much of the onion becomes fleshik is also machloik. Some learn a kedai netila, which is a chutzi esba, and we some are machmed the whole onion. We are machmed even the whole onion. We just don't use the onion. I can't talk for the Ashkenaz Swadim. I have no idea how the Swadim treat this. Onion is a dove Why the whole onion? Because we say it travels, the, the flesh. And, and, uh, No, we don't say no. We don't say it becomes fleshig the part that way. The main thing is that the, the onion is a fleshig, and we don't use it. You know, in agony, you can't use it for milkics. Or if you cook with milking enough, you can't use it for fleshig. Let's say you put an onion in a pot, and right. you, uh, you uh, grill the onions in a pot. Also, oh, that we're going to see later. See, if you put that depends how you put the onions in. If you put hot, there are two ways how to do it. Ask women always, they tell me. It, right? There's a way you put the oil in, let it get very hot, then you put the onions in. Right. Or you're just lazy, you put everything together. If you put the uh, oil first in, the 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 HaShulchan holds, by the time you put the onions in into the hot oil, it doesn't have a chance to... Uh, uh, it, it loses its sharpness. The sharpness as you put into oil. Because uh, uh, onions, as soon as it gets cooked, loses its sharpness. So the Aruch HaShulchan wants to say, if you boil the oil and then you put it in, the, 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 then it's not a problem. Yes. Well, it doesn't become fleshy. I mean, it's not that it, it, it does mean like it's to have that in mind, but if it happens. The onion won't impact the pot. Right. If you have the milk of the onion. But you have it. If that if woman went and did put those onions in her it doesn't, pot. Yes, it doesn't become. Uh, the pot's fine. Yes. But the food? It's fine. It, it's it's lucid. It's a power it became. It doesn't have the power. But if you put it into a blender, it makes the blender flesh. Maybe. Maybe. If you put it into another blender, it makes the blender flesh. No, no, you know what? Hey, one second, one second. You're right. It doesn't make the plot flesh, but the onions itself, you shouldn't eat from mochix. But you asked me for, I'm sorry. It, all it does is that if we put it into oil, it loses the kharifas, but, but the onions became fleshy. Right. They were already were fleshy. It became fleshy. It's just the question it has an impact on the, pl- uh, on the on the pot. It doesn't have an impact on the pot. That's it what we're saying. Onions, the pot don't impact the pot. Yeah, but the onions is... Are you cut the onions with the fleshy knife, and the onions are fleshy. But you put it into boiling oil, it never had a koyach to affect but the... If I put it into there's a pan, which is milk, right? So I put the fleshy onions into the milk the pot. Then it's a problem. Now that's a problem, right? Then you have to cash the pot. No, no. Depends how the oil, if the oil was heated first. So 
So the opan is okay. But the onions are straight. Right. Well, they're not straight. The onion is, is uh, fleshic. Okay, but, well, the, the, if the if frying pan is, is a benyoyim, ain't a benyoyim. What is the frying pan? So, uh, okay. If it's a benyoyim, then the it's not a problem. Right. Everything. And the onions are still flaky. Right. If it's a benyoyim, then. Then, well, if it's a benyoyim, but if it does make, if you really, I tell people throw out the onions, but a be ikra the onions is not so terrible. Did you see last week the the blender becomes? That's a separate issue. That's a that's different. That's we do. How far do we say? Now you blend onions. Does the blend also become? This is it kills the the kharifas here. That's different. Here here it oil. If you put into boiling oil the onions, the onions becomes neutralized. We talked about the other way around. You took the onions, you put it into a blender. Do we say now the blender becomes fleshy? You understand? That's a different. That's a machloikis. That's what I say. I don't know how. I don't know the mishnah, but it's a machloikis. But the evidence it's okay, I tell people, but it's a machlekes. I tell people to have a separate blender. I ask my, my wife says we have a separate blender. It's not expensive. It's not, it's not, she told me it's not expensive. It's good one. Everything good, yeah, but it's... Uh, but if the onion is also expensive. Yeah. <laughs> but if you put the onion together with the oil, it makes the pot. It may neutralize. Yeah, if it, then it's a problem, right? Right. Uh, what else? We don't have the Shachan or the so let me just think what else. Um, garlic, you know, the, the, the Persians use a sharp, what's it called? Kumis? What? Radish? Radish. Sharp, right? They also use a, a yellow thing, what's it called? Uh, Sour onions or something? No, Kumis? Kumis? Cumin? Cumin? Something like that? Sumerang. Sumerang is called it. Spice, you cut the spice. No, no so I, and I, there's something else. I, per, I have someone, Daf Yomi, he showed me, he brought this in a very, very sharp spice, but you chop it up. What about lemon and lime? The, uh, that's a big machlekes, if lemon is called kharaf or not. It's a huge machlekes. What about orange? Orange is not kharaf at all. The question is lime and lemon. lemon. <laughs> I'll give the it says in Simit Sadiqay, hopefully we'll learn like Smeek. I, and I mentioned him once here before, and when I would tell this to people that think, who knows what I said? So people asked me just this uh, last week, am I allowed to go to Ralph's and buy vegetables? Cut vegetables. Or they have pre-cut vegetables, they have pre-cut fruit. So nowadays, I, ha- I don't remember who it was, but as a Baba Chingaman came to me one year, and, he, and he, that's his business. He, he cuts the vegetables for Ralph's. And he explained to me why that happens, because Ravs does not want to, uh, they used to do it themselves, but they have to pay the workers, you know, what the union wants, and who knows what. And he says, I just have uh, some Mexicans do it, and uh, we have a place, and we cut them, and uh, Ravs is very happy. But uh, the Maisa, he said that we use special knives. You know, we don't use this regular knife. You cut standing and cutting there, you... But, no, no. So, so then someone asked me, so this guy asked me, how about at the vegetable corner? You know, you have to. I'm, I'm sure you have it in this neighborhood too. The fruit the guy. Fruit guy. Uh, you know, this corner and the stand over there. Maybe he cut his sandwich, his ham sandwich, and then he was cutting. So let's say he did it. Let's say him did it. But he cut the enormous amount of fruit. And Shechan says that it, it, it becomes bottle. So you allow to like it, buy cut fruit and Ralph's cut fruit from the stand. Cut fruit and because that would be the first fruit that would be the problem. Right. right. But after but but so since this bottle, you don't know, so right, it becomes right. bottle. But what if they're what if they're cutting cutting foods like onions? Yeah, onion would be a problem, but no one's we're talking about fruit. Yeah, but they have like, 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 like salad and they have pre-cut fruit. Yeah, that I'm not talking about. Because I'm not talking have, about I'm talking about that garlic. Garlic. Yeah. 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 I'm not talking about I'm not talking about I'm 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 talking about cut. We go to the store. You buy cut vegetables. You buy cut. Uh, on. See, and, and even lime. Lime is not kharif. 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 Lime is Yes, you could buy, sure. Oh, so that one, like at Ralph's, at Ralph's, at least on your side of town, they have a big salad bar there. 
Yeah, the only pro- the old problem the old problem. Let me explain this. This is a very good question he asked. You know, uh, I don't pay attention. You know, <coughs> this, this guy. Uh, the, we don't uh, have it by, in our neighborhood. Uh, 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 yeah. it's, it's true. And now you tell me, I noticed. But they're a little brain, they have a, a huge salad, salad bar. Well, there's a lot of young people living there too on Sixth Street. They use it. That's why. But anyways, there's a huge salad bar. So the, the, the theoretical, it wouldn't be a problem. The only problem is it's open. And they walk back and forth and use the same spoons. You know what I mean? If you notice, they're not even though they, um, they're not careful. But theoretically, if they would be careful, if there's certain places, you know, where they'd be careful, it shouldn't be a problem. They cut the vegetables. They usually cut, uh, even though they cut down, it shouldn't be a problem. So that's why the sealed ones, vegetables that pre-cut, and the sealed fruit you cut is perfectly okay. The Meshachanorich talks about herring. They used to buy herring from a goy. And uh, and so uh, and and lemons and it's a duvachara, but since the goy cuts a lot of uh, um, 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 herring and a lot of uh, uh, lemons, so even it's duvachara. By the time you get it, it's it's bottle baroy. I, I keep hearing. I go on a trip sometimes, and I keep and I'm told by other rabbis, you either eat get kasher uncut fruit and vegetables. Or that's just a fence, right? I cannot speak for your rabbi. <laughs> so, so if I go on the airplane and, 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 and I go on the airplane, and they give me like little lemon, that's okay. Do you? Well, I'm sure how do you do Same thing, yeah. It's a What about the ones with like red peppers, yellow peppers, green peppers that are not spicy? That's okay. It's shirchan. That's not a problem. That's not a problem. So I mean, that's what the shirchan brings down. So you know, one of the questions, yeah, uh, by side, one of the questions people ask me, they tore down the Johns in my own neighborhood. We had a, a, a Johns uh, store and uh, Johns Market, and they would have always. They would do some crazy. Always have every few months to get people to come to the store. They would sell, and salmon was always. So the yeshiva, uh, Chabad yeshiva, Rabbi Taylor called me many years ago. So they would sell salmon for a third of the price. It's uh, for the money. So I said, you know, and uh, one of the, also the rabbis gave him a hard time. And I said, don't worry, you could buy the salmon. They didn't, they cut, uh, I, I, he tells me, there's 500 pounds of salmon dying over there. So, you know, even, they, even if they cut the, the, with the knife that they cut the other fish, you know, but uh, it comes bottle again. It's not a problem. So one second, no, just so you, so you could buy. The problem is that someone people, uh, someone asked me. He goes downtown to the place where they cut the fish, and he tells them to cut his fish. That is a problem because a minute ago this guy cut uh, swordfish and shrimp, and now it's cutting a. That's a big problem. Then you, if you do that, you must take a scrub and scrub the fish well off from the place that it was cut. The, you don't have to, you need a ducha. You don't need a klipa. You just need to scrub it off well. So if I go into, uh, if I'm on the road and I go into a supermarket and buy a piece of salmon cut there, does that? Yeah, if there's a lot, a lot of salmon there, you know. Yeah, see, like, like there's a whole pile of salmon. Yeah, then you can buy it. It's not a problem. You can wash it well. Right? If you want to be machma, really machma, wash it well. You don't have to wash it well. It's in our house over here. They sell an enormous amount of salmon also. And I imagine when they cut salmon, you just cut salmon. And when they cut something else, they cut something else. What about sushi? Yeah, you, you don't know how he did it because maybe you just you mixed non kosher. How do you know he cleans his knife? Why should he clean his knife? Yeah, but it has to it has to be very clean. Fish knife, fish. You know, the problem with fish fat, it gets very s- sticky. It's hard to clean off. Do you know that? What's another problem? Theoretically, is you don't by fish by fish. You really if it's cut into steaks, you don't really know is this a kosher fish. That's a, no. You have to know. That's for sure. You have to have the scales. You have to see it. That's for sure. That's a separate issue. Okay. No, there's so much tzaddik. Hey, I just wanna. 
Let me just finish. Yeah. yeah. What if you're allowed to eat the garlic? Is the ones question. That are prepared. What? The ones that are prepared. Yeah. Clean, clean garlic. Yeah. Can you have those? We spoke about, about it here. No, did I speak about it? Here? Uh, 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 let me. Uh, 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 he asked. Uh, what's the question again? Yeah, David asks. I I think I spoke about it here once. Someone asked me here. The question is, you know, you heard it by sight. You could buy pre-cut garlic, pre-crushed garlic, and onions. And uh, so the question is, the Gemara says, three things you should not have peeled overnight. Garlic, uh, onion, and an egg. So the question is, why do we all have, you know, when you buy a cake, when you buy cake, the, I want to tell you a big secret. The, it, the, the, the baker doesn't stand in one but cracked eggs. That's, those days are gone. The, he gets pre, a pre, um, right, catering? Uh, uh, you buy in a, uh, in a big thing. They buy uh, finished <laughs> yolks, finish this and finish that. So Ramosha was asked this question many, many years ago. And he, Ramosha says when the Gemara talks about it, it's when you want to use the egg now, you put it for tomorrow. You want to use the onions now, and you want to put it away for tomorrow. But if you cut the onions for a later time, it does not apply. So Mela, that's why the mini is you buy pre-cut onions, you could buy pre-cut uh, garlic. Now I know that many people always tell me, we are Mahman. I tell them, do you eat cake from the bakery? Yes, so why is the eggs different? I don't get it. I heard this from a rabbi once. No, the Gemara says, or a pickable, all three is the same. All the same. Egg, the mother, the mother and the says all three the same. But there's something about the stamping on the garlic or something like that, right? Oh, oh, oh. If the stamp on the garlic, then it's okay. It's only if it's completely removed, right? Stem, yeah, but the pre-cut garlic is removed. Huh? The pre-cut garlic, what you get is removed from right. the stem. Yeah, that's true. That's the same if you have a stem. So, so the onion also. So do you make devil eggs uh, for Shabbat Friday, on Friday? It's only raw. Eat? It's only raw. Only right. raw. So what do you mean egg? Eggs, if you have a raw egg, you kept it overnight, that's a problem. Right. If you cracked it and you didn't want to use it today, you want to put it for tomorrow, that's a problem. But if you prepare eggs for Shabbos and cook, it's okay. What do your mother do at home? You don't remember what you did? Put salt on it. They put salt and oil on it. But if you keep the peel on it, it's good, no? The top peel. The top peel. The top peel, you have it. Do you use salt and oil or just salt? Uh, 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 says salt and oil. And you said Rav Moshe said that. That if you made, if you make, if we buy, if you, since it's made for the later time, pre-cut, it doesn't. It's not a problem. No, but, but what about if you use a little bit and you cut it all and you put it in the fridge? Or you yeah, you should put a little oil and, and salt on it. Oil and salt. Yeah. It's not about the, the, the thing about covering. You know, you have unpeeled onions. No, no, no. There's no such thing. That's not it is. And the Gemara says, So, you know, if you eat, if you eat a, a, cakery, a bakery cake, you could be eating the pre-cut. Uh, so now, let me tell you another halacha. This is very, very important, Rabbi Sai. What happens, Rabbi, this is very important. Now, you have... A fish cooked in, uh, you have potatoes cooked in a fleshiga pot. Can you put the potatoes now on a milchiga plate? Hot potatoes. Hot potatoes. Hot potatoes. Yeah, but like it's, if we hold the ketchari, you're not supposed to do it. So can you put it into a plate? We said that if you know for sure I'm cooking potatoes in a ben yoimoy, don't put the sour cream on it. If I cook potatoes in a ben yoimoy, can I put it into milk? The Shulchan Aruch says, yes, you can. It's not a gay for the Svartim, but we Ashkenazim who don't do like it, you know, and this is very much a gay. You cook potatoes and, you know, the flesh you pot, and you want to put some of the potatoes in a milk plate. We pass, and it's okay. It's perfectly okay. <laughs> if even it's a ben Just don't eat it. Even if it's a ben yoyman. No, but would there be any difference if you cook it in a melted pot? Same idea. Same idea. You're right, you can't eat. We machmen not to put, if it's a benyoyim, not to put milk, uh, sour cream on it. That's what that you could do. You can eat it in the milk of the plate, don't you? Yes. 
That's very important. This is all the time asked. Or a milchig uh, uh, fork and a spoon. One of the things people always call me, the, the potatoes are made in a fleshy pot, and my children use milchig uh, spoons. And, uh, but they have it, so it's, you know, even like a tchela. Assume the pot was clean, even if it's a bayoimoy. How do you know someone didn't have a raw onion with that fork? Or does that matter? Some people put raw onion in salad, and if you had that on the plate, would that. That's not a problem. That's not a problem. No. Okay. Even on the fork. Right. Yeah, that's not a problem. Now, a- another thing that Shechon Aruch says over here, so we don't have a Shechon Aruch here in front of us, but it's very important. An egg, you cook with meat, the egg becomes really fleshy. We once spoke about this before. Shechon Aruch mentions it a few times for this because we shouldn't make a mistake. But if you put eggs into the chalant, the eggs are fleshy. And and uh, the reason is because eggs are porous, it has hope. You know, it has a, you know, that a chick breathes through the holes of the shell, uh, shell. you know, that's where it gets its oxygen. So you take an egg and you cook it, that's why it becomes discolored because uh, in, 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 in the chalm. So that's why the Sheikh says you cook eggs together with meat, you should know the eggs are fleshy, you can't put sour cream onto it. No, uh, well, well, depends. If you want to, if you really want to have a, a tasty, fleshy, tasty eggs, we we we'll, that's where machmal amaisit. We all wait six hours. But we have to eat that egg. We have to wait. Have to, since the reason you put the egg into the chant, you want the eggs should have a chant taste. Oh yeah. Yeah, if it's only that's the only reason you just couldn't have another way to cook it. The Moroccans love the eggs in the chant. Are you? Yes, yes. But you're saying your, your intention, it's only your intention. So if your intention is just, I only have one pot, and I put it with meat, then I can eat milk right after. Right after. My intention is the flavor, even though my intention Yeah, because is it's like Xeta, it's a whole Xeta like Xeta, so that's why. So even if the egg is flavored, if my intention means I can eat milk directly after. Right. Where is that from? That's from. Uh, it's a Shach. Shach says this. Yes. Basically, everything that was cooked in meat is like that, right? Everything that was cooked with meat together comes like fleshy, right? But the chiddush and eggs that you shouldn't think eggs that it doesn't so become fleshy shell. Fleshy. You can eat shawl that has no pieces of meat. Has a taste of meat. You become fleshy because the bottom line is you want to have a, a fleshy taste. Yeah, that's why you didn't want to have a taste of meat because the bottom line is you want to have a fleshy taste in shawl. It doesn't mean you didn't want. It was made that way. It doesn't do with you. See, let, let me explain. Shh. Now, let me explain what David asks. You know, it doesn't depend what your intention was. It was a tension when they cooked it. That he says, I want a chalant. I don't want the chalant to be fleshic. I don't care what you want now. It's a fleshic chalant. You become fleshic. They, they we're talking about when you cooked it, you, let's say you didn't want to become fleshic. You were lazy to clean the plot and became fleshic that way. You have oh, another pot. You had no intention to become fleshic. You said, with your wife made the chal and she put meat into it because she wants the chal to be fleshic. So just because you don't want it to be fleshic, you become fleshic once you eat it. The egg is, if not eggs, he didn't want. He had no else to cook it. If his wife wanted it, then it's fleshy. But if it, it's fleshy. But he says, what happens? He only did it because he had no place to do it. That's a. It's not normally eggs in a chant is fleshy. He had a hypothetical question. His question was, I have no other pots to cook, and that's why I put the eggs into it. But, uh, but the bottom line is, normally, you put the eggs into the chant, you want it to be fleshic. That's what the whole purpose is. Yes. Well, if you eat the egg, you wait six hours. Yes. Unless you didn't want it to become fleshic, and then it's, there's no play after. No, if the eggs were cooked, you know, you're, not, you're not say, quoting it correctly. If I cook potatoes in a pot, and I did not want to become fleshic, I was just lazy to wash it, same, oil. Same, I was just lazy, you know. Cooking before or even and just, you just poured it out, you were lazy to wash it to make any cooked potatoes. 
You had really no intention to make a flesh. Honestly, now you're not playing games if you don't become fleshing, the Shaf says. What is Mamashus then? At what point is it, is it called Mamashus? Peace. You see pieces. Yeah. Oil it's not oil, it's not Mamashus. What was your question? We spoke about it here. Let me let me answer that question. And once upon a time, no, now it's now again. If you want to live an extra twenty years, you go to 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 uh, what's the store across street from Ralph's um, German the Trader Joe's, and you buy fertile eggs, and you're guaranteed to live longer, and and uh, and and be trafe because the fertile eggs are incredible high on blitz blitz blood spots. So the people, my neighbor, started buying it, and I, I, I didn't realize why. I never had such a many question. You don't know that Trader Joe's sells fertile eggs. And so why are you buying it? You know, it's very healthy. Who told you that? Uh, Trader Joe's told me. Uh, huh. But the truth is that, uh, that uh, but if you, uh, uh, our eggs are not fertile eggs. Our eggs is, is, is. Wait, wait, so sorry to it's a fertile egg, so my male, if one is a blitz drop, if it one turns out to be a blood spot, so the problem is you have two against one, so it became bottled. So that's why, and, and, and they had a separate pot in case you forgot. So the whole pot shouldn't become traffic. That was the minute in Europe. Nowadays, none of our eggs are fertile. So even if one is a, bl- a blood spot, nothing happened. That's why, you know, I also got married. My wife was like, when I told her this, you know, I always say, my wife is, and daughters only one has me. Are you sure? Remember, someone, not my wife and daughters, asked me, are you sure? I says, that only my wife and daughters have permission to do that. <laughs> <laughs> so my wife, I got married to her. Are you sure? I mean, if you buy a, a non-fertile egg, you don't have to check the blood? You don't, you don't have to check so the blood. So the whole thing about checking the egg up and down to make sure it's blood is you don't have to do that. And a, non, and a non-fertile, it's a nice thing to do. You don't have to, you don't have to do it. And you can eat it, even if there is. No, you have to take out the blood. It's not a sign. You don't have to throw the egg. Not not throw the egg. So not fertile. You see red. All you take <laughs> out is the redness, and, and the rest of the egg is okay. No, fertile egg is okay. It's just if it's red. It's common fertile eggs to have blood spots. You can't, if a fertile egg has a blood spot, let me repeat this. A fertile egg has a blood spot, the whole egg we don't eat. That is that enough community is weird, but we eat many years, we don't eat it, period. Our eggs are not fertile. Now, one second, if you have, let's say, uh, uh, let's say uh, a guy in your kitchen, your restaurant, just cracks the eggs for you, does he have to check the flour spreader? He keeps cracking, you don't have to worry about it. Nothing, right. If it's not fertile. So long as you're not buying the fertile eggs, right? Right. Got it. Because when in, this, in the bakery, they get pre broke, uh, uh, who think uh, broke, uh, cracked those eggs? <laughs> You think some chassid she eats standing behind the counter? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I, I was thinking there's Danish cookies that they sell in, uh, mostly on your side of town, the extraction cookies, and they advertise on the back. Yeah. Uh, that they, they, they check the egg for the. Uh, that, that's the just, <laughs> you know, that is, I, may, I don't buy those cookies, but Daf cannot because it's, it's a, he's a ganov. That's what he is. It's a simple, you know, he, he's, he's trying to scare you and say, you know, we have a hitter over here. We check the eggs. Like, you know, <laughs> those are not good. We are good. That's really what it is. Speak up, what? Huh? Yeah, that's what he was saying. That only applies for the legs. <laughs> only for the legs. See, my, the, my side, the restaurant, I asked him, uh, Alit, he says, yeah, it tastes better. The potatoes do taste better. The, how's it called? Fr- fries are called? Does it matter if it tastes better or does it matter yeah. if it's yeah. the intention? I can never distinguish. He's saying he has two baskets in the same tub of oil. One has inflation and one has French fries. The French fries are inflation. Even if you have no intention. That's the question. That's what he wants to know. It's the same bag. 
Is it the intention or the taste? Same water. It's the same oil? Oh, then it's for sure. He t- now his question was that I have leftover oil, and I take the oil and I use it for french fries. I asked them, do you use it because it gets, yes, there's, there's, it, because the oil was cooked with meat, it has a better taste, the, the fries taste better. But if you would tell me that I, there, absolutely no one cares, and you also wouldn't care, just because it, 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 the, the, then the fries are not fleshy. Even if it's cooked together. Even if it's cooked together. No, 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 it's not cooked together. They're not cooked together. No, no, cooked together. no one after the other. No, no, no. no. One after another or together. No, together is no good. No, no, no. It's all after another. Even if it's separation. What if there's... Yeah, well, I don't know how it's done. Um, um, well, some, there's residue, some kind of oil. I'm just saying, if it's cooked together, nothing to talk about it. We're talking about if you cooked it afterwards, and the reason, you know, that's the only oil you have. You have no intention to make it. What's the explanation of this intention? Because the whole thing is a chumrah. That be'etzem, that a tafshil, that potatoes that became fleshy and you need six hours is a chumrah. So b'chaykes are the shoinim and we are machmed. So the shach says the chumrah only was when you wanted to eat for a, a tasty meat and the potatoes. But if you, the reason it became meaty is because, uh, like, uh, this oil. Uh, we don't want to throw the oil out. So, so, uh, so if I had a big enough restaurant, I would separate the oil personally. I'm saying I would keep yeah, but he, the guy tells right, me no, he wouldn't. Let me one second. So, right, right. But if but, uh, uh, he's saying it doesn't give it a taste, that you, uh, according to you, Here, uh, no right. problem, no problem. You don't become fleshy. And the guy, uh, elite, told me the other way around. It does make a difference in taste. What's the name of your restaurant? Where is it located? There Yeah, that's right, right. So I get fries from Jess, I gotta wait six hours before eating. No, because yeah. sometimes I cook it together. Yes. Sometimes yeah. yeah. you cook it together, right? Yes. Yes. And now here, separate baskets. They cook it together. Hey, now they put up, make you put up a sign. Who gives you a shgokha? Oh, they don't make they you make cook it. They make a sign that says that what? Our fries are six-hour fries? Yes. <laughs> so they can put up a sign. I've never seen that sign. Anywhere. Just RCC, just, just implemented so it. You your, your veggie burger six hours, right? Which what? The veggie burger. That's a good burger. On the same grill. The grill the veggie burger or the same grill? Same grill. Like you don't want the veggie burger to have it in front. No. And you don't have yeah, to wait six hours. There's meat on the grill. Yeah. There's meat on the grill? Yeah, yeah. yeah. it does. Well, it might be meat on this side. It might be, it might be on the same side. If there's mamash, it's no good, but just the taste. The veggie burgers on one side, far enough away. And That's no problem. Okay, everybody say. <laughs> the rabbi should have the full shleima. Say, the rabbi should have the full shleima.